This is part two of the um, channeled fairy tale that I was given in the 80s, actually, the late 80s, when I was being trained by the higher beings to receive channeling. And before giving me the two really important books, they gave me um, this wonderful journey through our inner child and shadow selves. Um, something that I've referred back to over the years many, many times. This is part two, and if you remember in part one, the jester that Damara meets had has just taken her through the colour red of, of the rainbow or of the chakra system. You can see it in both ways, actually. Walking on together through the blooms, the red began to fade away, and they entered a sea of orange, Swirling, whirling colour, blowing in the wind. Damara saw before her the twirling leaves of autumn, colours of the winter fall, summer sun, and shades of spring gold. Orange, orange, orange. The, che the jester was catching the leaves and blowing them away again. Damara caught one, fingered the crisp image and put it in her pocket. It will not keep for another day, the jester sighed. It is blowing in the moment for you, Damara. Enjoy it while you can. Damara watched the leaves fluttering down, forming layers of summer's gold, covering her very being. Her mind took hold. I will draw around one, she explained, exclaimed, and then the image will not fade. Let go, Damara. Tis the only way, the jester replied, as he brushed the leaves from a large spotted toadstool and sat down. Sit beside me and I will tell you the tale of a little boy who found it hard to let go. Many times upon time flies a kite, free and beautiful. It is one of the most precious silk. It is made of the most precious. The, the reason I'm having difficulty is I'm reading from a very faded manuscript, which in itself makes the whole thing very difficult, but it's also um, sort of uh, catching my memory here. Um, many, many, many times upon time, there flies a kite, free and beautiful, it is made of the most precious silk with an exquisite pattern unique to itself. It sways this way and that, showing off the delicate threads of the rainbow woven into its design. Tis a magic kite that flies free, but it can be harnessed when needed. The fairies know the way. And when they heard of this little boy who would not let go, they gave this magic kite of love to him. If I remember, the little boy's name was Sam. Sam held on tightly to his kite. He did not let the string out much at first, lest it would slip right through his fingers. And then the kite would go up, up, up and away. It was a large kite. In fact, it seemed to him that it grew bigger each time he took it out of the bag and let it fly. But then that's not surprising when the fairies have had something to do with it. Sam did not know that they had designed a fairy kite of love just for him. Now, all fairies know that love grows and grows if it is, if it is allowed to, that is. But Sam was only an enchanted little boy and not a fairy. I'd better tell you a little more about Sam before he became Sam. He had lived many different lives, finding out all the usual and unusual things about the world we live in and learning some of the lessons we are here to learn. But Sam had never before come to terms with that thing called love. So he had been given a fairy love kite. And what better way to learn? There's nothing that fairies don't know about love. Now let's go back to the kite. Sam just couldn't understand it. When he let go of the string more and more, 
The kite flew further away, but it looked bigger and bigger and it felt so strong in his hands. This particular da day, Sam was feeling very brave. He decided to go somewhere different to fly the kite. Before, he had always taken the path to the park where he felt familiar and he knew that there were no real open places where the kite could feel its freedom. But today was different. He, he had to find out just how big this thing would grow. He walked a long way from home. The going got hard. He stumbled time and time again over rough pasture, rocks and tangled undergrowth. But he struggled on. At last he saw a clearing, but fear took hold. Would the kite get too big for him to handle? He stood a while and help came. The dandelion fairy flew in from the nearby patch and blew him a long, long kiss, which as it reached him on the wind, restored his peace and tranquility. He untangled the string and placed the kite before him on the ground. And after taking one last look back, he ran across the field until the kite took flight. He slowly let out the string more and more, feeling each time the power in the, in the flow from that incredible cord that held on to the beauty in the sky. As the power of that love kite flowed through his bones, he grew more and more secure, knowing that however much he let out, he would receive the strength back through the cord in his hands. The cord that attached him to the beautiful thing in the sky that had grown so big, he could not see its beginning or end. His eyes could not perceive the infinity of it all. Sometime later, Sam woke in the middle of the field. The corn fairy had seen that the sun was going down and Sam should be on his way home. She tapped him gently on the nose and flew swiftly away before his eyes opened. Sam looked up. Where was his precious kite? There was no sign of it in the sky, but he was not disappointed. He felt a warm glow in his heart and knew that he would never go away, that it would never go away and was worth all the kites in the sky. Now, com contentedly, he made his way home. Damara, dear, memory is but yesterday and exists no more. Tis the heart that sings today. Listen well as we walk this path. For everything is as, as it is. But it is the is we do not understand. That's the end of part two. And um, I will be very soon putting up part three of this magical tale.